Hello and welcome. My name is Hugh Williams and I'm the editor of Jane's International Defence Review. I have the uh, pleasure and privilege to welcome you to today's online intelligence briefing, which will provide an analysis of Russia's surface-to-air missile capabilities and will be presented by uh, Conrad Musica, who is our senior analyst uh, for military capabilities, and Sean O'Connor, who is a principal research analyst here at Jane's. Uh, this intelligence briefing program uh, this year will consist of 40 events during 2017 and is available to all customers of Jane's Intelligence Center and module products, including the market's forecast products. I would like to uh, highlight that the information used today um, for, for today's presentation has been drawn from a variety of Jane's content, but particularly from Jane's Military and Security Assessments Intelligence Center. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sean O'Connor. I'm a principal research analyst for Jane's. And what we're going to look at today is the Russian land-based surface-to-air missile force. I'm going to start by looking at the current strategic SAM force disposition and some of the capabilities. Then I'll hand over to Conrad, who would do the same for the tactical SAM force. Before we go, and then at the end, look at some of the future capabilities, some of the new developments, and then we'll look at the overall capabilities of the network as a whole, coverage zones based on site deployments and things of that nature. Identify the following operational strategic SAM batteries broken down by each Joint Strategic Command. You can see in uh, Joint Strategic Command West, for example, there are nine identified S300PS batteries, 15 S300PM, and 10 S400 batteries. What we've done is we've identified all of these batteries using imagery, so all of these are confirmed locations. And we'll break down on the next slide how some of the numbers actually work. If you look down there in Joint Strategic Command South, you'll note that one of the Crimean S-300PS deployments, which is where both of those batteries are currently situated, is a former Ukrainian battery whose control was retained by the Russians once they occupied the peninsula. There were a couple other Ukrainian S-300PS batteries around that they disestablished and moved into garrison, but the one battery that's located on the southern side of the peninsula they decided to retain. There are also three SAM batteries currently identified as deployed outside of Russia. There that brings us to the most recent development, which is deployment of the S-400. Again, it's basically the exact same modular SAM design. They've got a target engagement radar, which is now the 92N6. It's basically the same type of phased array radar. It's a space-fed optical feed phased array system. It's now mounted on a new chassis. They're trying to get away from using a lot of the older uh, MAS 543 systems. Got some imagery of some of these recent developments. This is the former S 300 PS complex at Baltisk in Kaliningrad. This is on the coastline. It's on that spit of land directly south of Baltisk. You can see there is a S 400 battery here. This is one of the two batteries that was deployed at Gvardaisk. The Gvardaisk batteries had the toad tail you can see here, and the two batteries that were deployed to the region later actually used the self propelled launcher. And then you can see down at the bottom of the slide, you can see where the displaced S300PS battery components have now basically been gathered and stored. This is that Rogachevo S300PM deployment up in the Arctic Circle. You've got the battle management area to the north of the site and the battery area to the south of the site. If we zoom in on the battle management area, you can see there's the command post vehicle, the 64N6 battle management radar, and then a number of missile reloads and other equipment vans and components. The main objective of Russian land forces air defense units is to prevent enemy air action from interfering with maneuver force operations. The most recent manifestation of this role came in early 2014 when Russian or Russian-supported tactical air, air defense subunits effectively forced Ukrainian Air Force and Army aviation into a standstill after the latter suffered heavy losses. Air defense forces protect ground units and, and other potential targets from attacking by fixed-wing ground attack aircraft, cruise missiles, and armed helicopters. They also deny enemies air reconnaissance, deter enemy airstrikes, and prevent or interdict enemy air assaults. The secondary mission of air defense troops is to protect air and airborne or heliborne missions forward of the line of contact. I think this mission is gaining increased importance uh, in recent years, given the ever-growing role of Russian airborne un units in ground operations. 
Russian ground-based tactical uh, air defenses are increasingly mobile and capable, thus they complicate suppression and avoidance tactics. Typically, air defense brigades are part of combined arms armies. However, there are some exceptions. For instance, units equipped with S-300 V4 they directly report to the JSC, in this particular instance, the JSC West. Uh, given the capabilities of the system, uh, this could indicate that the V4 has a slightly different and more strategic role to play in provision of air defense capability for the land forces. On the other hand, I think it also should be noted that the 202nd Brigade is located in Narofominsk, which also houses the 4th Tank Division that belongs to the 1st Guards Tank Army. It is, of, it is therefore likely that the V4 equipped brigade is tasked with provision of anti-ballistic missile defense for this very unit. When it comes to the equipment, uh, I would like to start with the book. Uh, the ground forces op uh, operate around 300 book sums systems of all variants. The vast majority of these systems are, however, old, older books, namely M1s, M12s, and some book M2s. Res recently, the land forces uh, also started fielding book M3. The last system for engaging high-tier aerodynamic assets is the S300 V4 that has been entering service since 2014. Its main purpose is to improve effectiveness of anti-missile defenses umbrella. The S-300 V4 is mounted on a truck vehicles and is armed with two kinds of uh, different missiles. One is capable of engaging air breathing threats at ranges of possibly up to 400 kilometers, while the other is intended to engage theater ballistic missiles with velocities up to three kilometers per second, which are typically about 1,000 kilometer range missiles. The lowest tier of air defense in the Russian army is provided by MANPADs deployed within motorized and tank brigades. Uh, the latest MANPAD is the 9K333 Verba. This is only now just entering service in significant numbers, so the bulk of Army's MANPADs inventory is still composed of the earlier Sierra 3 and Igla family MANPADs. And what I'm going to look at now are some developments within the early warning network, and then we'll move into the capability of the network as a whole before we start looking at some of the future prospects and the impact all this has on the potential Russian SAM export market. There are two new sensor systems that have become online recently within the Russian early warning network that are relatively significant. The first is the 55ZH6M or NEBO-M system. This is a multi-band mobile radar system designed to facilitate the detection of very low radar cross-section targets. To do that, it uses up to three separate radar systems and a, radar, and a command vehicle to basically process all the data. The RLMM radar uses a VHF band the RLMD operates in the L band, and the RLMS operates in the S band. This shows you one of the Nevo M radar systems that's been deployed. You can see the command post there in the center, and there's the VHF band radar unit to the left and the L band radar unit to the right. And again, there is no S band radar unit currently deployed. And this location is actually interesting because it's in uh, it's near Mayak, which is on the western end of the Crimean Peninsula, so it provides coverage over basically the, the entirety of the Black Sea. So here's SAM coverage in JSC West. We note there are a number of S400 and S300 PM batteries deployed around Moscow. There's also S400 batteries deployed around St. Petersburg and a couple of S300 PS batteries and PM batteries scattered throughout the area. As well. And then here we have JSC East. We can see there's S400 complexes defending Vladivostok and Nakhodka down in the southern end, as well as a number of S-400 complexes defending the Russian naval facilities, including, again, the SSBN base at Petropavlovsk on the uh, Kamchatka Peninsula. So with the retirement of the S-200 and S-300PT, the Russian Strat SAM force is now solely based on highly mobile systems capable of operating fully well within a modern combat environment. They have the ability to rapidly relocate following target engagement, and that's going to complicate future efforts to target these systems down the line. Also, continued increases in capability are bringing additional ability to prosecute low observable and very low observable targets. Uh, thanks very much for joining us today. Uh, we look forward to welcoming you to future online briefings. And our, ne our next briefing, uh, which is on the Gulf defense markets, will take place on the 20th of September. Thank you very much, and goodbye.